Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux. And I've been putting this video off for weeks now. On one hand, I feel prepared for this video, but if I had completed this video weeks ago, it, I would feel a little bit more confident. And I've been attempting to write some documentation for things I want to be able to repeat and possibly share. And so I've been going down this rabbit hole of note-taking apps and markdown text editors and just plain text editors that can be modified for markdown. And naturally I want to use a uh, free open source software as well as a project that is currently maintained. And even with those parameters, I tried Obsidian and it is an amazing piece of software and seems similar to where I've ended up, but still kind of overkill for me. Also, I use my PC exclusively. I am not now, nor will I ever be a smartphone power user, not even a little bit. So having a note-taking app for my phone is not even a consideration. I'm currently using self-hosted Nextcloud residing on my home server, but the notes directory is actually on my NAS, and that is being synced using this uh, Nextcloud sync app. Now I might switch and use a Git repository for all notes in the future. I'll definitely use uh, Git for documentation that I write. Now over on the right side of this screen, I tried using LogSeq, which is what this is. And I personally passed on this because the interface, it, it looks and is a lot of work to figure out, at least for me. Uh, so I am passing on this because I just thought it was uh, not as simple as I would have liked. I tried this. This is called Laps. This is a uh, new editor that has been written in Rust. Uh, and here's the website in case you want to go check it out. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think it's pretty good at this point. Um, now, is it what I want to use for uh, Markdown? No, not at this point but it could replace Genie at some point because of how uh, robust it is. So I did take the opportunity and uh, create a laps.sh file in my bookworm scripts directory at uh, GitHub in case you want to easily install it uh, on, your, uh, on your machine. So give it a shot if you want. Uh, again, not even beta yet. This is QOwn Notes. I wish it was part of the Debian packages so that it could be easily installed, but it is. Uh, it takes a little bit of effort in installing uh, QOwn Notes. I really wanted to like this more than I do uh, because you can, um, through the settings, enable um, Nextcloud support, and I've seen it work, and I got it to work pretty pretty easily, but. I don't know. I just there's something about it that I just don't necessarily like to use. So if I, if I don't like to use something, then I you know I can always move on and try to find something else. So what you're looking at here is a Ghostwriter, which is very simple and easy to install. sudo apt install Ghostwriter uh, at in in your terminal, and you are looking at what you see here. What's nice about it is I kind of like the two panel thing where it will, uh, you look at the code and then you will look at the resulting, uh, how it would look on a page, much like a readme.md file for a Git repository. So this is what it would look like. Now, as far as full features are concerned, no. I'll give you an example. I would like to be able to go over and copy this and keep these uh, links constant from where, when I, where I paste it into my note, okay? So if I do paste, notice it doesn't keep those links. And that's fine, um, but it's not exactly what I was looking for. So I'm just gonna go Control Z. And we're gonna get into um, something a little bit more robust. In fairness, I don't know that I gave uh, Joplin here the sh fair shake that it deserved because with regard to free and open source software, this is this is really, really good. Um, what I didn't, what, I guess the reason why I didn't give it uh, more time is because I didn't necessarily 
I don't know, gravitate towards the way the interface is. Um, let me go ahead and try that, that same test where I pasted um, those links and it does not work. I do like the fact that, that you can add tags really simply here. Um, but it, overall, maybe I need to go back and take a look at this more closely. These final three that I'm going to talk about are the ones that I've spent the most time in. Now, that doesn't mean that, I don't, that I'm not going to go back and talk about uh, GUI and terminal-based text editors because I think I'll finish off with that. But just to complete my thought as far as uh, GUI markdown editors that, um, that also have some note-taking components. This is markdown. Uh, sorry, markdown. This is mark text. A few weeks ago, I exchanged uh, Discord messages with Matt from the Linux cast. We had a very brief conversation uh, about note-taking, and uh, I asked about Mark text. He said, well, that's really good for writing. He suggested Notes Nook, which I looked at, but kind of, I kind of didn't like that much. Um, regardless, uh, what concerns me just slightly, just slightly, honestly, um, is the fact that I don't know how much development is being done on a mark text at this point. As you can see, the last release was 2022. Now, as a Debian user, I don't know that it, you know old software doesn't really change my opinion about something. If it works, it works. And this works. So let's do that, that test again. I'm, I wonder if I... Uh, so I'm just going to copy this again and go back over and see if this works. So here you go. Um, as far as um, as far as the links are concerned, it's working. Um, so fantastic. When I try to drop in images, it's a little bit more challenging, and that's something that I want to make sure that it's really easy for me. Or if I'm trying to integrate a YouTube video in my notes. Um, that's also something that I would, I would like to have as well, as long as it's simple. So this kind of falls into my kind of top tier, uh, but let me talk about two more that also fall into that top tier. I am not a VS Code user, but I respect the heck out of it and anyone that uses it. And I really think that it's something that I would consider using, especially if I was um, writing notes that were going to be automatically synchronized with uh, Git. Now, I don't know about that yet, <laughs> but let me go ahead and tell you what I think in terms of how it works for both Markdown and note taking. Now, I only have two extensions that are installed right now, and one's the Markdown editor and the other one is the preview. Okay, I'm going to go back over to Explorer, and I'm just going to grab this um, this file, this Markdown file. And as you can see, uh, if I want to, I can just simply edit using uh, Markdown code. But what I want to do is I'm going to close this, and the only thing that's going to be different, you're going to see in a second. I'm going to say open with Markdown editor. Now, notice you get a lot more um, feedback, and you can easily add uh, code to the file without know, having to know a, a great deal of, uh, of Markdown code. So this is pretty good. And in fact, if you want to, you can even uh, go over here to More and say Editor and Preview, and you'll get a really good idea as to what it would look like, for example, on a web page uh, with the uh, formatting. Now, the test that I used before, I'm just going to go ahead over here and I am going to use this formatted text that I want to copy and let's go back over and say uh, and let's just go ahead and paste and look at that the code looks phenomenal and uh, the actual um, preview of that looks really good as well so let me try one more thing I'm just going to go ahead and put something down here and added a couple spaces or a couple lines rather. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab an image and put it in this markdown uh, file. 
So, but it's very difficult to do that with the, when I'm using this extension. So for example, I'm going to put that in and it didn't work. It's just kind of on its own separate file. But what if I just grab it and put it here? It comes up with this. Now it looks like it did what it was supposed to do. But the fact of the matter is um, I don't like this, um, the location of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to undo that. Now, because I want it to be a relative image, I'm going to go back over here. This will work. So I'm going to grab this. Now this is just the, just the code um, without using the extension, remember? Um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to grab it, use the shift key, and there it is. I'm going to put it in there and yeah, that path is exactly what I wanted because if I put this on a different, uh, let's just say I put this on a web page, it's going to make more sense. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back over here and there is our uh, image that has been put into that uh, markdown file. Now, as most of you know, I have never claimed to be an expert on anything. And when it comes to v VS Codium, um, I would say that I am a noob of the highest order. I am simply trying to make my notes look really good or uh, a markdown file that I'm going to post for either information or documentation look really good. If this is not the way to do this, then I'm going to plead out and say, sorry, I just didn't know any better, okay? Um, I do have one more thing to show you as far as a markdown and note-taking application, and that is Zettler. So I want to pre-warn people, but let me, let's just take a second and look at this, the interface here. To me, this looks a little busy. And I really, really like its functionality. But when I go over to Zettler, I'm going to show you, I think, it's, I think it's really clean looking. So let me go ahead and click on Workspace 9. Um, and while I have now blinded you, I am going to go over to Settings and turn on Dark Mode. And let's go ahead and close that for now. So how did I install Zettler? Well, you go to there web page and click on the downloads um, and here you can see that you have an opportunity to install it a number of different ways on different platforms uh, including app image now i use the debian package uh, i think you can do FlatHub. in fact i know that you can do FlatHub as well um, but i use the debian package and installed it via command line and i'm going to go back over here now, take a look at this. It looks like it has uh, signified that there might be potential error here, okay? So I'm gonna go over and look at this um, settings and editor, and it, what it's looking for are a single asterisk on both sides to signify an italicus, which is what I wanna do. So let me go ahead and just take out um, that and put an asterisk there and and let me put an asterisk there, and it looks like that cleared up that issue. Let's look at the table and look at the tools that Zettler provides. You can change whether it's a left center or right justified. If you go down here, you can add a, um, a, a row or add a row here, and you can also just kind of re remove those. Oops, I messed up right there. Okay. And there you have it. You can, you know, adding columns and rows is really very simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple uh, carriage returns to the bottom of this page so that we can take a look at that uh, when we try to copy and paste uh, text that's been formatted like we did in some of the other apps. And I'm going to paste. And there you go. And look at that. It gives us feedback about these individual uh, links, which is really cool. And if I want to, I can just say control and hold the control down and hit um, that link. And it takes me to my browser 
where um, I can I can go to that page there you go now there are many people out there that enjoy using tabs and you can see that tabs are definitely part of this um, this software fantastic now I'm gonna go back over and click on this now let's take a look at this sidebar for a second it does have a table of contents so if you do have a lot of um, um, headings uh, it will be able to like get you where you need to go um, but I want to go over here and click on other files now there's nothing there but I have populated a couple images in this assets directory so when I click on assets here it shows up those other files okay so like we did with uh, VS Codium I'm gonna try to add um, a image really easily so I'm just gonna copy not copy but I'm just going to drag that in there and there's the image now take a look at the uh, it is relative as far as the location of the image is which is what I want and uh, when I click off of that you can see that the image is um, available and viewable so what I'd like to do is start taking more notes daily and to accomplish that I created this daily directory and what I'd also like to do is go back over to settings and advanced and as far as new file names I'm going to change this percent ID to percent Y capital Y dash uh, percent M and um, percent D okay and that should be it and I'm going to close that now if I go to daily and I clicked on new file you're gonna see that it you know filled in the date correctly okay and there it goes and I've and, I've, um, and I'm on a new file and by the way this has this really cool global search so that you can um, especially for this workspace if you're looking for something uh, the global search works really well okay let's do a couple things I'm gonna go back over to the web and I'm going to uh, copy uh, so I'm going to share this video I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back over and I'm going to paste it okay now let me just go down a little bit and so if I do hover over this you're going to see that it's one of the videos that I've done in the past and um, if I want I can go and you know click on it another thing that you can do as well is I'm going to oh, share I can embed right so go to embed and copy that and go back over to this and paste and there you go you can uh, you can use that as um, as a way to either play in line Hi, and welcome to the channel. okay now another thing that I really like also is that I can go over and copy a bunch of stuff so let me just go over to uh, this this is something I'm gonna probably do in the next day or two so I'm gonna copy uh, all this stuff on installing TrueNAS and I'm gonna go over here and just paste okay and you can see that it is actually filled in the table of contents too because it is um, it's using those headers so it went from um, header 1 to header 2 and header two and there you go it puts them as a table of contents now this is really cool uh, software this Zettler is really really good now if you have gotten to this point in the video and you have looked at Zettler and all the functionality that Zettler has um, for me I don't know that I would consider moving to a text editor whether it be a GUI text editor or one like NeoVim now I really have to talk about um, Light Excel once again, which I've done several times on this channel. It's become more and more developed. The developers have really done a nice job in making Light Excel more extensible. In fact, 
Um, some of the plugins that I use are color preview and language underscore sh, line wrapping, minimap. Now I use a few more on my production machine, but this gives you an idea. So let me actually go back over here and I'm gonna go to config, just so you can see that the, uh, as far as color is concerned, you can see that. Now I am gonna go ahead and close this and I'm going to uh, use the change project folder, control shift C, and I'm going to go to my notes directory so that the workspace is similar to how it was on uh, Zettler. Okay, so like if I go here and if I go to Zettler, you'll see that it's extremely similar. But I'm going to go ahead and close Zettler for now. Now I'm going to go back over to Light Excel. Now, could I use this? Probably. Uh, do I feel confident is the, <laughs> is the real issue. Because I know that there are probably many of you watching this video that use something like NeoVim to do your uh, markdown, either creation or editing. So it's really a question of competence and confidence. And I don't know that I feel either competent or confident in using this particular method to, uh, to code my markdown files. Now, I can do it. I would be really, really slow in doing so. By the way, this is kind of an interesting uh, side. If I go over here and I say right click and I say open in system, look what happens. It goes to the default uh, markdown editor. So that I, if I ever got stuck, let's just say I was using this and using it and I was I just like, oh, I want to put a table in really quickly without me having to do all these lines. I could do that really quickly with a editor like Zettler or um, even something like Mark Text, that would be that would be ideal too. Um, and so that that would be something that I could probably do and then save and then come back over here and do um, and do whatever editing I need to do in the text editor. Now, having said that, I again, I'm probably going to use Zettler for the foreseeable future. Let me just open that up. I think it's really nice. I think it's really uh, valuable. I haven't seen a lot of people online on YouTube that have said a whole lot about Zettler. In fact, some of the videos that I watched were from Zettler uh, from like three, four years ago. So I hope this helps, that helps um, with any of you that are looking for something like this. Um, and I hope that this, uh, I hope that Zettler stays around for a long time. It's, it's really good software. So anyway, uh, talk to you soon and later.